Hi, I'm Sarah and welcome to Rich Textures Crochet on YouTube. Let's crochet something beautiful today. Hello everyone and thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to learn how to crochet the button up cowl. The button up cowl is a easy cowl to make. It is made using a simple rib pattern and it features three buttons here up the side. The pattern is crocheted in rows so it is crocheted flat just like this and uh, and then once you are finished you place the buttons on it and uh, fold it over accordingly. So in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make the button-up cowl and then add your buttons and fold it. For this pattern you are going to need one Karen Latte Cake, which is this yarn right here. It kind of has a fun texture. It's very, very soft. Uh, it is a bulky weight yarn, which is a number five. If you would like to substitute it, you can use another bulky weight yarn. You will also need a six millimeter crochet hook of your choice, as well as three 1.25 millimeter buttons to 1.5. It depends on the size of the buttonhole that you want to make, but for the pattern that I've done today, I've used a 1.25 millimeter button. The material, once you're finished, is quite stretchy. It has a little bit of give to it, so you can be flexible in your button size. So now that we have all of our materials together, we'll get started. Before we do, don't forget to head on over to my social media accounts on Facebook and Instagram, and you can follow me there as well. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel, which I like to update weekly with free crochet patterns and tutorials. Now this pattern is worked in rows. So the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to make a chain of 95 stitches. To do that, you're going to start by making your slip knot. And then simply chain 95 chains. Once you have made your chain of 95 chain stitches, you are going to begin your first row by single crocheting in the second chain from your hook and in each chain across. So you will see your first chain here. This is your first chain. You're going to single crochet in that second chain. And then in each chain all the way across. So in the end you will have a total of 94 single crochet stitches in your row. At the end of row one, your 94 single crochet stitches, you are going to chain one and you're going to turn the wor your work. Now for row two, you are, you are being asked to work in the back loop only and single crochet in the first stitch and in each stitch all the way across. So to work in the back loop only, you're going to take a look at the top of your single crochet stitches. So if I take my hook out right here, you can see the top of my single crochet stitches right here. This first one is the chain one that I turned with. So this does not count as a stitch, but your first single crochet stitch is right here. Now to work in the back loop only, you are simply going to put place your hook under the loop. So up here you have this V. You're going to place it under the loop that is the furthest away from you. Normally when you worked a single crochet stitch you would insert your hook under both of those loops. So when you're working under the back loop only, the loop that is the furthest one away from you, that is your back loop, and you're going to insert your hook only under that one. 
and you will work your single crochet stitch as you normally would. So you are going to single crochet in the back loop only of the first stitch and in each stitch across. So continue under the back loop only and work single crochet stitches all the way across. So by the time you come to the end of row two, you will have again a total of 94 single crochet stitches worked in the back loop only. Then for the next uh, rows, number three to five, you are simply going to repeat that row two. So you're, for rows three to five, you will repeat the single crochet stitch all the way across in the back loop only. And you will see that it's going to create a bit of a ribbing effect. So it's going to have uh, some nice texture for you. And you will see that as you come uh, to the end of row five. So continue that and then I will meet you back here. At the end of row five, your work is going to look something like this. So you can see that I have the ribbing here started. You'll have these ridges clean across your work. The other side looks the same, just like that. When you come to the end of row five, you're going to chain one and you're going to turn. And now you are going to start a row that will include a space for your button. So we're going to work the button hole. To do that, you're going to continue working in the back loop only, and you're going to single crochet in the first five stitches. So working in the back loop only, single crochet in the first five. One, two, three, four, and five. Then you will chain two, one, two. You will skip two stitches, one, two. And then you will single crochet in the back loop only in the next stitch and in each stitch all the way across. So at the end of this row, you will have a total of 92 single crochet stitches and you will have this chain two space right back here. And this is a space for your buttonhole. If you would like to make a smaller buttonhole, you may simply chain one and skip one and then uh, single crochet in the back loop only all the way across or if you'd like to make a larger buttonhole again you can chain three and really uh, elongate that space there and uh, skip three uh, stitches and then single crochet all the way across so there's a little bit of a way to customize it a little bit more for your personal style okay so then you will just continue to single crochet in the back loop all the way across you'll have a total of 92 stitches and then you are going to turn your work and you will single crochet in the back loop only in each stitch across and in each chain across so continue working and I'll show you that uh, when you come back to your buttonhole. So continue all the way across, chain one, turn your work around, continue working in the back loop only, and single crochet all the way across back to that buttonhole. When you work your single crochets in the back loop only all the way back to your buttonhole, you can see here, when you come to that chain space, you are going to work under both loops in the chain and you're going to place one single crochet stitch in each of those chains. If I can get mine in, there we go. Uh, so one single crochet stitch under both loops in each of those chains, and then you will continue working five more single crochet stitches in the back loop only. Um, so one in each of the remaining five stitches. At the end of your row, you're going to chain one, and you're going to turn 
And now for rows 8 through to 21, so for 14 more rows, you are simply going to repeat row 2, and that is your chain 1, your single crochet, and the back loop only. So in between each button hole, you will have a total of 15 rows of single crochet stitches in the back loop only. So repeat row 2 for rows 8 through to 21. And then you are going to work another buttonhole. So that will be your repeat of row six. You'll work another 15 rows of uh, single crochet ribbing in the back loop only. You will make your third buttonhole. And then you will work a final five rows of single crochet in the back loop only. Now, uh, please head on over to my blog at richtexturescrochet.com and there you will find the free written pattern for this tutorial and that will help you uh, remember how many rows are in between each of the three buttons. When you're working, just make sure that you remember all you want all of your buttonholes to be on the same side and you want them to be in line with one another. At the end of your row 43, so at the very end of your cowl, you are going to fasten off, you're going to weave in your ends, and uh, then you're going to attach your buttons. And I'll show you how to do that in just a moment. Once you have finished uh, working your 43 rows, you will have a product that looks like this when it's laid flat. Now over here, they're hard to see because this yarn is so hairy, but you will see my three buttonholes are all over here on the right hand side. To attach your buttons, what you're going to do is you're going to lay your cowl flat with the right side facing up. So your button holes are going to be on the right hand side of your work. You're then going to go over to the other side of your work and your buttonholes, uh, I'll just point out, they're going up uh, along this short edge. Okay, so they're going up along the vertical. For the button placement, you're going to move your cowl over to the left hand side and you can see my buttons are already placed here. And your buttons are going to be lined up along the bottom of the left hand side and they're going to be lined uh, along the horizontal. So you're going to place your buttons along the rows. Now to measure how far in I wanted each of the buttons, I simply took a measuring tape and I measured in about one and a half, or uh, one and a quarter inches from the edge of my cowl. And at one and a quarter inches, I took a stitch marker and I just marked that one spot, knowing that was where my button would be placed. And then simply sew on your button. From the center of that button, I measured across to approximately 3.25 or 3.5 inches, 3.5 inches from one button to the next and again keeping my buttons in line so I lined them up on the same row that I had before I marked the stitch and then sewed my next button I made sure that again it was 3.5 inches between the next two buttons and then marked that stitch and sewed on my third button now if you are unsure of your button placement what you can do is leave your stitch markers in and then take your cowl and simply fold it over so that uh, you can see that the buttonholes line up properly. To fold my cowl, I turned it over and I folded one end in and then took the buttonhole end and kind of crisscrossed it up. So I guess I, should, I was doing that upside down. Okay, so I turned it over, fold the buttons down like this. And then the other side of the cowl, fold it down and lay it over top. Let's see if I can get this a little bit further out here for you. Okay, I'll show you one more time. So I turned it over, the buttons are on the side facing away from me. I'm going to fold one end down here. See my buttons here? And then I took the other end and brought it over to meet this 
the top of the cowl, this is the bottom. Then you can make sure that your buttonholes right here line up with each of the buttons that are placed along the horizontal stitches. And you can make sure that they match before you sew them on there if you would like, or you can just take a chance <laughs> and sew them on and move them around afterward. But that is your cowl. It's nice, this cowl is stretchy, so uh, it can fit a variety of sizes. It's not too heavy, so it fits nicely under your coat or over a sweater. And there you have it. So thank you so much for joining me for, on the, for this tutorial on how to make the button up cowl. Be sure to again, again subscribe to my YouTube channel and uh, I look forward to crocheting again with you soon. Happy crocheting. Bye.